Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, this particular cryptid has been suggested multiple times in the past. The only reason I didn't talk about him was because in doing some research with regards to this cryptid and its characteristics, it is by far the scariest, absolute scariest cryptid ever. There is nothing that I have read that comes even close to what this thing can apparently do and the fact that there's so many recent sightings uh, recent in the sense that it's happened just within the past couple of decades as opposed to past cryptids that you would start looking into the early centuries just to even get a hint of how long they've existed the fact that this particular cryptid is far more recent makes it all the more creepier I still don't know though if this is necessarily something associated with paranormal. I'm going with the stance that this is in fact a cryptid of some sort uh, because of the many, many iterations associated, commonly associated with cryptids. So I'll explain about it here. So if you haven't heard the most scariest cryptid of all, it's called the Popo Bawa. Um, pretty unique name, pretty unscary name considering how essentially malicious this thing is. I mean, if, if El Tunche is, is something that's a little bit on the evil side, this one takes the cake. This one goes all the way to the extreme. So if the speakers are set to channel 10 at maximum, this one takes it to 20 and beyond. Uh, the Popobala is again a cryptid that is very very recent but apparently it's just localized to one area and that's at a Tanzanian island of Pemba uh, so if, if you're going towards that area be on the lookout uh, have, there haven't been any stories really associated with anything else outside of that area I mean yeah I mean there was probably um, like an East African coast area that was affected too but apparently the main main location of this cryptid is in Pemba so again if you're near that area watch out um, so the Popobawa is apparently a cryptid that is kinda like perceived as a shapeshifter in other words it can change its shape what you'll see though are pictures of what it's most commonly associated as which is like a giant bat and for some reason I guess it looks like it's a giant bat but it's more along the lines of a humanoid with one eye like a cyclops and the way that it um, attacks is it essentially goes house by house at night well it's a nocturnal creature it's its most uh, popular time period and it attacks uh, the, the inhabitants of each household one by one and what makes it so scary is it actually attacks them in a sexual manner I mean this is a creature that if you're doing something like that, you obviously this is a creature that enjoys exactly what it's doing on there. Um, and again, uh, the fact that it looks like a bat, maybe because of the fact that the shape of it is like a bat, but it's not necessarily a bat itself. So it's kind of hard to explain that, but with regards to its most often cited description, the closest thing that people can say is that it looks like a humanoid bat on there. And so the way the Papa Bawa attacks is it either comes in the form of a bat or it comes in the form of a human. It visits people at night and then it apparently, its telltale sign is it'll have a pungent smell of some sort. Usually like a sulfurous odor, odor type smell. So whenever you are in that area and you start smelling that distinctive smell, you know you're in a bad place on that part and so the way it attacks is that apparently it'll jump on people like th there you are people are asleep in the household it'll jump right on you and it'll start pressing your chest down uh, apparently that's how it attacks and apparently it enjoys doing this because it enjoys seeing somebody almost suffocate to that point and once that happens and the victim is completely terrified out of their mind uh, after this senseless almost beating of some sort um, if somebody has let's say a spouse right next to them then it'll jump onto the spouse as well and pretty much do the same thing and then it'll it, it'll repeat this towards the next person in the household and the next one after that all again just doing this almost for fun nothing really in terms of anything as far as 
uh, like other past cryptids where it's either on the hunt for food or it's doing whatever when it comes to its prolonged existence. No, this one is apparently something that is just doing it purely for fun. And then on top of that, apparently the Popobawa, not only is it distinctly humanoid, but it also apparently understands and talks the language associated with that area. So much so that, again, due to its evil traits, it apparently enjoys, after everything as far as the attack itself, in some cases, again, in a sexual manner, it'll tell that person to purposely tell others about what happened. So instead of, say, the victim deciding, you know what, you know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and not let anybody know about this, no, no, this particular cryptid, the Popobawa, it will tell somebody, you absolutely better tell this to everyone else, again, enjoying this fact that, that this person is about to humiliate themselves in this manner. And it says, if you don't tell, then I will continue my repeated attack until you do so. That is sick. That is absolutely sick. Again, this is a creature. Um, it's a cryptid, but it's by far the most evil cryptid, the most, I guess, malicious cryptid out there. Nothing comes even close to that. So much panic has apparently happened within this area that people are scared to be in their homes. They are actually scared to sleep at night in their homes uh, because it looks like if you are sleeping in your home you are attacked but if you are sleeping outside and then you are not attacked. As strange as it sounds that's what the research showed on there and it's so much so that people are actually spending the night awake outside of their own homes it's uh, essentially just wrapped around blankets, wrapped, um, you know, gathered around a large bonfire of sorts as they wait for the Popobawa to leave the area on there. Now, what's really scary about this fact is that the Popobawa, again, it's a fairly recent cryptid. The first stories date back to 1965, so it's not too far back. A good 50 years or so on there. Uh, but the sightings increased throughout the 70s and 80s, but it absolutely reached its peak in 1995. So much so that it incited a panic. There was actually a panic, a mass panic within that area from the Popobawa. And this is how it occurred. Um, uh, apparently this happened during the, what is it called? Uh, I can't remember the time period. The Ramadan, that's what it was on there. Um, it was during that period on there that reports of a Popobawa was attacking a household. And once that happened, and the Popobawa again in that area um, had already had a huge impact. Once that happened and news about him was again in the area, it spread like wildfire. And so when that happened, um, people started accusing each other of themselves being the Popobawa again because this is apparently a chameleon like shapeshifter of sorts it'll absolutely incite panic it'll be almost like that movie The Thing where you'll start wondering hey is my neighbor the thing? is uh, my mom the thing? is my coworker a thing? stuff like that people started actually thinking that that's that the people around them were the Popobawa in disguise and there were fights there are riots because of this yeah, people were accusing others of being this thing when in fact in, in most cases they were innocent and so what had happened was eventually uh, people that were there like the homeless people the ones especially with mental disorder uh, because they were in a state of their mental disorder perhaps rambling nonsensically or doing activities that one would consider them to be not of this world, um, they started actually attacking those poor homeless people. And in most cases, they were homeless, so much so that one of them was actually killed. One of the poor homeless people was killed because he was in a bad mental state. People thought that that was the Popobawa, and then they started to attack him, and he was dead on there. There were actually 70 different incidences that happened in a couple of weeks during the time in 1995. So again, this spread like wildfire. Uh, 70 single instances on there. Very freaky stuff on there. Um, there is a good, very good article 
that I found on Scribd.com that pretty much states uh, whatever essentially happened with Popo Bow, and I'll read it to you here. Again, this is pretty good stuff um, because when it comes to the Popo Bow, uh, the history associated with this, it's fairly recent. But my goodness, this is not something that nobody wants to happen to them. It says here, in the first half of 1995, an extraordinary collective panic swept across the Sansibar archipelago. It started on the island of Pemba and later spread from there to Ungunja and Zanzibar town. Men, women, and children described being assaulted by a shape-shifting spirit called the Popobawa. And on the larger island reports were rife that adults... Uh, of both sexes have been sodomized by this malevolent entity. In order to avert its nocturnal attacks, many people resorted to spending the night huddled together in ancient groups and anxious groups outside of their homes. On both islands, the panic produced incidents of collective violence. When strangers suspected of being manifestations of Popobao were attacked, beaten, and in some cases killed by the angry mob. Government efforts to calm things down were largely ineffectual, not least because most Pembans and supporters of the opposition, something called the Civic United Front, believed that the ruling CCM, it's something called the Kamakcha Mazinduza Party, was itself responsible for bringing Papua to the islands in order to divert attention away from politics and the runner-up of the country's first multi-party elections. So there you have it. Um, all the actions that the Popobawa has done, the belief that one other party uh, was, was essentially bringing this, uh, this entity, this cryptid, whatever it is, to the island in order to divert attention, the fact that people were killed, those that were suspected of being this particular cryptid, again, you, this um, truth is stranger than fiction. You can't make this stuff up on there. Very, very freaky items. And what's interesting too is that with regards to recent attacks, there's some that are even down uh, just a couple of years back. It'll be on uh, September, I'm sorry, it was 2007 in a place called Dar es Salaam. Um, there were reports of something like a winged bat of some sort that was uh, essentially attacking, attacking people in and around that area. And the BBC even reported on it. This is, again, how unique this particular cryptid is. The fact that you have a giant news organization like the BBC doing something like this. So, Popobawa, uh, nothing that I know of with regards to something, you know, being so, so evil. Nothing that I know of in terms of of like what attracts the Popobawa or how what repels it on there it just seems to be something that exists in that area and then just attacks on there what's interesting also is though the fact I mean people have done research into these uh, what had happened everything that I just mentioned uh, with regards to uh, this area in Sansibar being impacted so much again a mass riot a riot an actual riot on there occurred because of this. Uh, you do not hear that with any of the other cryptos that I mentioned in the past. Imagine like a riot in the sense of a large city turning itself upside down. That's what happened on here. And so people um, that have done research on there checked into some claims and this is what's interesting with regards to uh, like hospitals where people have said, oh, okay, the Popoa victims, they went to this hospital or they went to this medical center uh, because that's where the victims were treated afterward. But whenever some of the people that were doing the research went to those places and asked, the people that were there, either in the hospital or medical center, would say, nobody came in like that. You know, nobody came in claiming such a thing on there. So it makes you wonder again uh, with regards to the truth associated with all these claims again um, this stuff the fact that this it's weird you have one polar opposite which is stuff that has been researched in terms of a true mass attack happening there in that area and then with regards to others actually checking up on some of those areas and finding out that you know nobody has been in around that area uh, you know claiming these things as far as being attacked makes you wonder again how much is truth how much is fiction on there it could be that the Bubba Bawa is their version of the boogeyman that that's their version of 
of, of that you know the usual thing that every country seems to have when it comes to something being so malicious um, but here the Popobawa is by far just based on the characteristics or one of the most evil things I've ever come up you know researched with regards to this very very freaky stuff um, nothing that I've done in the past compares to this so uh, nothing really in terms also of I guess stories associated with the Papa Bao and how to repel um, nothing is really as far as what to do um, in and around the area so um, if anyone has anything with regards to that please you know post your comments share them below if anyone has heard any other stories associated with the Papa Bao you know please please post them on here as well so many of you have requested in the past and here it is on there Again, I don't know if it's necessarily any form of uh, cryptid. It could be a flat-out monster. It could be paranormal. It has so many characteristics associated with it. It's a multitude of items all at once, so I don't know how to classify it. But for the sake of the channel on here, I'm classifying it mainly as a cryptid on there. So, Alright, thanks again as always, everybody. Take care. Bye.